Okay, so get ready to use your math knowledge and skills to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Ed's bike has 26 inch tires. If he rides the bike for 900 feet, how many revolutions did the tires make? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time before I show you the answer. So Ed has this bike. It has 26 inch tires. In other words, the diameter or the width of the tires are 20, is uh, 26 inches. And of course, he's gonna ride this bike for 900 feet. How many revolutions? In other words, how many times do the tires turn? Okay, is the question. And the correct answer is approximately 132.7 revolutions. Now, there is uh, definitely room for slack in this answer. So if you got like 133, 134, even 131, I think I would consider that as a correct answer. So if you did this right, I would definitely give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of circumference. Okay, and that's what we're talking about here. And circumference is the distance around a circle. We need to understand the concept of circumference to solve this problem, but this stuff is not that difficult. So if you didn't get this right, I can assure you in a couple minutes, you'll be looking like this person right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. And first things first, first we have a problem, a math word problem. Always use the rule of three. Read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. You know, patience is a virtue and it is key to be successful in mathematics. Now, a couple of things here. Uh, obviously, I kind of read the question uh, again, but let's just review it one more time here. So Ed has this bike and we have the dimensions or the uh, tires. In other words, how wide the tires are. And uh, he's going to ride this bike for 900 feet. And we're looking to see how many times the tires turned. Now, one observation here that we want to uh, always pay attention to in any math problem is the units of measure. Okay, now here we're dealing with inches, okay, and here we're dealing with feet. So the, there's a mismatch in terms of the units of measure. So we have to make a decision, are we going to uh, use feet or are we going to use inches? One of these uh, units need to be converted. So that is an issue. I'll, of course, address that issue when we get to that part of the problem. But uh, the first thing you want to do in any math word problem is to model the situation. And of course, we could just come up with a lovely sketch here. So let's go ahead and take a look at my sketch. So here is Ed's bike. Now, Ed's bike, its tires are 26 inches. In other words, that's the width of the tires. Okay, now, we're, of course, we're going to assume that both tires are 26 inches. And um, the width is another uh, uh, way to describe the diameter, okay, of a circle. All right, so, of course, another thing, too, we have to assume, and you always got to make these simplifications in a problem here, that, yes, indeed, these tires are perfectly round as well. Okay, so this is kind of the, uh, the situation. We have this bike with 26 inch tires and it's going to go, it's going to ride it for 900 feet like so. And the question is how many um, times uh, are these tires going to turn, right? Uh, to cover these, uh, this you know 900 foot uh, span. So that is a revolution. So that more or less is the question. All right, so what do we need to do here? Well, the first thing we need to do is understand the concept of circumference, okay? Because if you don't understand this, then you're not going to be able to figure out the problem. Okay, so what is circumference? Well, let's imagine that we have a, a piece of string or a rope or whatnot, and the distance of that string or rope is starts from here, okay, around this circle, 
and it wraps around just like so. Okay, that's the distance of this uh, particular string. So we just take a string or a rope and we you know, tie it around a perfect circle and then we cut it with a scissor. Now we take that rope, okay, and we kind of lay it out this way, nice and flat, okay? So uh, effectively, that is, uh, you know, one way to kind of think about the circumference. Now you might be saying, well, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, let's think about this. So if I have this rope laid out this way and I already measured it, it goes around this circle one time, how many revolutions does it is it going to be required in order for this little let's say this is a pulley or something uh how many times do i have to turn this in order to wrap this thing this rope again around the circle okay now uh, just to be clear what i'm asking is how many times do i have to turn this around like so to pull in this rope to wrap around the circle well hopefully it's intuitive that it's like, well, maybe it's just one time. And that is exactly right. We have to turn the tire one revolution, okay, one time around, a full revolution from here. So it's got to go all the way around to wrap in the circumference, okay? So this is really another way to kind of think of the circumference. And of course, my tire got erased right there. But this is the idea, right? So in other words, we have this tire and we're like, all right, well, I know the circumference is this distance around, but it's also this distance if we unwrap it, okay? And we need to kind of think about, well, how many revolutions, again, is the tire going to make in order to wrap up one circumference around the circle? Well, of course, that would be one revolution. So here is our tire to wrap up, okay, one circumference, the length of uh, this uh, one circumference of the circle. Well, that will require one revolution. So this is just a little bit of logic and understanding that we need to under, you know, um, you know, consider to do this problem. Okay, so uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now what we're going to need is a formula for the circumference of a circle, and here it is. So the circumference of a circle is equal to the diameter times pi, and the diameter is the width of the circle. It goes to the center. There is another formula. For circumference, it's 2 pi r, uh, 2 times r, r is the radius, is the same thing as the diameter. So these are uh, equivalent formulas. And the one thing that we really want to pay attention here uh, in this particular formula is pi. Okay, so what is pi? Well, pi is an irrational number. It's a non-terminating and non-repeating decimal. This goes on and on and on. But I'm going to be using, for the purposes of this problem, a rough approximation of pi of 3.14. Now, uh, 3.14 is like the minimum, uh, I would suggest, in terms of a decimal approximation of pi. Now, if you want a uh, more um, uh, accurate answer, you could use more digits. That's why I indicated in the beginning of this video that some of you may have uh, used more digits of pi. And that's fantastic. I'm just going to be using 3.14. So, you know, my uh, answer might be a little bit off, but you know, the process uh, is still correct. Okay, so we're gonna be using pi again, uh, 3.14 for pi. Here is our formula. So let's go ahead and make, take the next step and put this all together. But the next step, of course, is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. Now, why do I need your support? Well, my objective is to reach as many students as possible, or many people as possible, that um, are either one, interested in math, or two, need assistance in mathematics. Nothing is worse than uh, a person saying, I can't do something uh, because, you know, uh, or I'm bad at something. And I've encountered this for decades and decades. I've run into so many people that said, you know, I always thought I was bad in math. It wasn't until later in life that I discovered that I actually wasn't. And, you know, they had some bad experience in, in school or some teacher told them something that they shouldn't have, or whatever circumstance. But, you know, it's really, there's so many students that are right on the edge of quitting on math. Please do not quit. If you're frustrated, uh, here is my quick advice to you. Okay, two things. One, there are no shortcuts, so you're definitely going to have to put in the work, irrespective of whether you like math, you're going to math, doesn't make a difference. Math is a, a huge uh, topic, a huge subject, and there's a lot to know. So you got to be willing to work. That's number one. Number two, you need to find someone that teaches you in a way that you like and understand, but most importantly, that is comprehensive. In other words, that someone explains things fully. And if you don't have that uh, kind of access to that instruction, I would like to be your math teacher. So when you subscribe, 
to that button, it's like I gained a new student. So I know I'm kind of blabbing here for a bit, but this is really important for me because this is the kind of support I need to continue to make content like this. And if you're gonna subscribe, go and hit that uh, uh, bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to do my little commercial here. Back to the problem. Okay, so now that we understand the situation, we're like, okay, here's Ed's bike. Uh, it's going to, he's going to be riding at 900 feet. And we know that one revolution is effectively uh, uh, equal to the distance of the circumference of the tire. Okay. And now we're going to have to uh, address some units of measure because here our tire diameter is in inches. Okay. And the distance Ed's going to be traveling is in feet. So I'm going to go ahead and convert inches uh, to uh, feet. Now, you, you could have just as well converted feet into inches, but uh, really it's up to you. It doesn't make a difference. The answer would still work out. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so a 26-inch tire, in other words, that's the width or the diameter of the tire, is the same thing as a 2.16-foot tire. Okay, now again, this is a, 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 an approximation. So what we're going to do to go from inches to feet and if you're not familiar with this notation right here, it's important that you are. So these two, well, two, like a quote mark, that is the notation for inches, okay? And one, okay, like this, like an apostrophe, is the notation for feet, okay? It's a very common notation. So just in case you didn't understand that. So how do we go from inches to feet? Well, there are 12 inches in uh, one foot. So all we have to do is to take this 26 inches and divide it by 12 and we're gonna get a decimal approximately 2.16 feet. So I'm gonna just kind of round off. So there you go. So our 26 inch tire is the same thing as a 2.16 uh, foot tire. And of course, we're gonna be using this information. So we are all, you know, we're all working with the units of measure of feet. Okay, not inches and feet, but just feet. Okay, so here is our situation. We have a 2.16 uh, foot, 2.16 foot tire diameter. Okay, and we now want to find the circumference of that, right? And which is effectively the distance Ed needs to travel to complete one revolution on this tire. So the circumference is equal to diameter times pi. The diameter is 2.16 feet, and uh, we're going to be using 3.14 uh, for pi. So we multiply this together, we get uh, 6.78 feet. Okay, so again, I'm going to be rounding off here. So that is the uh, the length of the circumference of this tire. In other words, this distance right here. But it's also the distance that Ed needs to go to complete one revolution of the uh, tire, okay, of his uh, bike tire. So now let's kind of put this together here. So here is our 26-inch uh, tire. We know uh, one revolution, okay, of these tires is going to be equal to the circumference, which is about 6.78 feet, and he has uh, 900 feet to cover. So how many revolutions uh, or how many circumference lengths, okay, will fit into this 900 feet? Well, this is just a basic division problem. So we're just going to take that 900 feet right here and divide it by the uh, circumference, the length of the circumference. Uh, so 900 divided by 6.78 gives us approximately 132.7 revolutions. And this is how many times uh, Ed's bike tires will turn more or less uh, during the course of his 900 foot little trip. Okay, so if you're thinking about this problem, you're like, wow, that was pretty interesting. But let's suppose you forgot this stuff or maybe you need to relearn uh, math. And you're like, well, I don't know where to start. You know, this is geometry, you know, but should I learn basic math first? You know, should I learn algebra first? Well, uh, for those of you out there that want to relearn mathematics, okay, maybe you've been away from math for many, many years, and you're just like, you know, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and give math another try. Or if you just want to strengthen your math skills, check out my new course. It's called my uh, Math Skills Rebuilder. It's actually uh, pretty popular. Uh, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, releasing this course. A lot of people are taking advantage of it. But in this course, I start off by teaching you basic mathematics, everything that, you know, to set a strong foundation in math, arithmetic, percent, fractions, you know, uh, order of operations, because without a strong foundation, you will not be successful in any level of mathematics. But after this, or after I uh, go through uh, basic mathematics, uh, arithmetic, and the like, I teach you a ton of algebra, 
a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics. This is a very, very uh, well-rounded course for any uh, student or any person that really wants to kind of reconnect with uh, you know, the math that they once learned, or maybe they never learned at all. Maybe you're like, you know what, I never got past, you know, basic math or, you know, basic algebra, and you kind of want to prove something to yourself. I think that is fantastic. Matter of fact, a lot of my members in my um, academy are adults that are going back to school after many, many years, and they just love it. You know, it's a great way to spend time, and it really does help you know, in terms of analytical thinkings. And of course, uh, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be in life in general. Okay, that's my opinion. But uh, anyways, if you want to check it out, uh, the links to all, uh, that, not only that course, but other courses of mine will be in the description below. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.